I also made the case for owning Bitcoin, the quintessence of scarcity premium. Scarcity premium. It's literally the only large tradable asset in the world that has a known fixed maximum supply by its design. The total quantity of Bitcoins cannot exceed 21 million. Bitcoin is the hardest money that has ever been invented. If you don't have my private key, you cannot spend my Bitcoin, period. And this is the power of Bitcoin. This is the first time we figured out how to create true property that you can take possession of with full custodial rights. Hey, what's going on, everyone? And welcome to Solo Rip number 22 here on the Talking in Bits podcast, where I can say what I want, when I want, how I want, and nobody can really do a damn thing about it. Thanks to Podcasting 2.0, and our RSS feed, decentralized technology, and the great listeners such as yourself. No ads, no sponsors, and I'm proud to say that that will always be the case here on this show. This show is for the people and for nobody else. If you like that, I appreciate you. If you don't like that, I don't fuck with you anyways, and that's just the way we're going to keep it here. Real nice and simple for those that just don't know. So welcome to Solo Rip 22. Um, man, that last episode, I was listening to it, the main chain episode, which was a rare one, meaning that I didn't have any guests. If you haven't checked it out, go check out Five Days in the Citadel, where I kind of recap uh, Bluffton, Georgia, and uh, I'm still kind of like struck with awe <laughs> and everything that I experienced out there and uh, uh, and everything that I, I've like been talking about it nonstop here to my wife and uh, making the moves, not like a little physical move. I just got here to Texas, damn it. I ain't going nowhere. Uh, but like just the life changes, man, to take care uh, of myself better than I have in the past and to try to inform y'all and get guests on here, y'all. Like I told y'all a few weeks ago with the... Um, with the rebranding of Talking of Bits, like Bitcoin is what makes this all possible. Bitcoin is what makes all these circles kind of converse with no, you know, political problems and no nonsense and no disputing and all that. Um, but this, you know, Bitcoin also extends to more than just currency. It extends to life. Uh, I also remember, uh, I don't remember when, a few episodes back, but I was actually saying that at the bottom of my stack of why I Bitcoin, uh, the currency, uh, uh, the value, the, the the financial gain of it is very dead last on my list. And the show is starting to evolve more into that show where we talk about life. And, and, and I want to give you guys more than just the technical aspects of Bitcoin. I mean, I am going to talk about that stuff um, and, and, and kind of like a news front of, of Bitcoin and be able to report on that stuff like I am in a few of the topics here today. So that's never going to stop. I'm just enthralled. Uh, uh, I, I just made up a word, didn't I? I'm enthralled. That's also maybe a made up word. Well, I'm just excited about Bitcoin every single day. Uh, I was talking to somebody earlier that I actually helped them get set up. Um, like, you know, basically just figure out what was going on with their um, with their cold storage device. And that person was like, man, you must have hated the fact that, you know, you got on a call with me. And to me, it's like, no, 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 no. I actually love this. Right. Like being able to help being able to empower, being able to educate. It's one of the easiest on-ramps to education, right? Like, you know, you, you try to tell people, you know, dumb example, but like how to lose weight. And like, there's so many different arenas and so many different people that they can listen to. And so many, you know, like they, basically you have to build the trust in order to, um, to to um to basically get them to actually like follow your advice, if it is helpful advice, et cetera. And Bitcoin, there really isn't many different ways to do the things that you need to do to do them right. You don't KYC. That's very obvious. So there was only one way um, to like, there's only one thing to do in that aspect and it's find ways to not KYC. Right. Uh, with, with hardware devices, there's only one way to sign with private keys. There's only one way to do these things. So it's much easier for me to get this education that comes easy to me and be able to give it to somebody that actually struggles with this information. So I was actually and and actually excited to do this day in and day out. That's why I love doing this podcast. That's why even in the wee hours of the day, I make sure that I get these episodes recorded so that y'all can get some value in whatever facet of life if, if life it may be. It may be in Bitcoin. It may be in health. It may be in, 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 in some type of form of sovereignty because that's what all Bitcoin seem to understand. The ultimate icebreaker in the room is that when you're a Bitcoiner, you automatically get sovereignty and you automatically get this sense of pushing forward and changing oneself. I talked to Dirgigi about this uh, back in the summer, back in June, 
where he came on the podcast and he was basically explaining to me this phenomenon that when you come into Bitcoin, you seem to just want to be better. Some people call it low time preference. Other people call it different things, but you always just want to get better. That's inherent in all Bitcoiners. They're the, 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 the most thoughtful people in the room, the most beautiful people in the room. Um, the the most creative people in the room they just are right and, and it's because of that it's because we have this one shared unity um, that is Bitcoin so uh, I'm gonna get into a few topics here as I tend to do but I wanted to remind y'all that you know Bitcoin and talking in bits grows into that and my next few episodes um, starting with Jason Rich, uh, Rich tomorrow which is a, a first generation farmer out in Colorado that I was able to meet. Um, he's going to come on the show and we're going to talk about sound food, something I've been super interested in lately. Um, and, and I want to do that so that y'all, I know y'all get the money part. I know y'all get the, you know, uh, a lot of these things. I had Phil on to talk about multi-signature. Um, so like we're still doing Bitcoin things, but like I also want y'all to be healthy because the counterintuitive part of this whole thing that people don't understand is that if you're not healthy, all of this is for nothing. Right, so stack sat, stay humble, do all this, go stuff my face with junk food. Uh, well, uh, if you fall apart or if you die or if you don't make it as far as you're going to make it, then guess what? All of this is for nothing. So I want to talk about sound food and I'm going to talk, I'm going to have a few guests on that are basically, um, we're going to talk about health and, and, and being overall. Uh, and, and I got a few of those episodes in the works for y'all. So please keep supporting, please keep following. Uh, I'm going to get into slightly something different here, a little bit into the mining route, and I'm going to give you a little bit of a, um, of a current update of what's going on about mining, but also um, just about mining in general. And then I'm going to get into uh, some taxes situation where we wait around and this parallel of like build, uh, Bitcoiners keep building regardless of what legislation wants to talk about. So first of all, let's get into mining. My personal situation is, is since I've moved to Austin, um, I still got some compass miners, which I have to wait till November to be able to recall them back. Everybody here understands what's going on with compass. There's no, uh, there's no secret here. And if you don't know what's going on with compass, then you literally been hiding underneath a rock. They're just falling apart. They're just a shitty company. And OGs have told me that cloud mining, which technically compass shouldn't be a cloud mining, but any situation where you don't have your miner in front of you and you don't know what's going on, it usually ends up with a bad story. And compass is no different. Um, there's rumors now that their facility partner has gone bankrupt here. Um, I don't know what the hell that means, but at like me and like many other people, we're just dying to get our contracts up so we can get these miners back. Away from that, I have an S19 miner that has been literally sitting in my garage for about two months now and it's driving me insane 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 so i got a lot of stuff going on like with a bunch of different you know video projects and a bunch of different uh talking to a bunch of different businesses and working on talking on bits and doing a lot of things and working the day job and doing all that so like i haven't really had a chance to do much with this miner now a really good pleb um that's out here as well and I'm not going to dox him he's a great dude if you follow miners you probably know who this guy is basically gave me a golden opportunity if I were to call it that um, he basically said hey I'm out of town for quite some time one of my miners is down let's try let, let's swap value for value and, and, and value for value is one of my favorite terms because it means so much to me and I'm going to talk about that later on so he basically says hey man Bring your miner down to my place. Plug your miner in in place for mines that's broken, right? And then do me the value of troubleshooting my miner and basically let's, you know, let's swap value for value. You take care of the of the miner maintenance and and, and diagnosing this miner and possibly getting it back on its feet, quote unquote, because it doesn't have feet. Um, and in the meantime, you can actually plug in your miner. I think that's a fantastic opportunity. Now, I'll be perfectly transparent. I've been one of the lucky enough miners um, to not have to actually fix my miner or any miner for that. So I'm very uh, basic or noobish in my ability to be able to triage and fix a miner. Uh, but I found this as a win-win scenario. So I'm always chasing growth, education, and all that, and all those facets of life. So this is just an opportunity as a win-win. I can learn, right, with a very low uh, bar, how to possibly fix a miner and get it back on its feet, which is education that's going to serve me well once I call these compass miners back, right? Because now I may have the possibility down the road where I am going to have to triage my miner and I am going to have to fix it and do all these things. So 
I can get my mind plugged in that's basically just sitting there, especially in this uh, bear market where you want to be able to accumulate as much stats as possible in exchange for not fiat, but education in exchange for being able to help a fellow club out and also learn this valuable skill of being able to get minor diagnosis and get in the back on their feet. Super, super humble that this opportunity came my way. And although I got so many different things going on right now, how could I say no to that? And I'm not going to say no to that. So I'll keep y'all updated on how that's going, on how my education is going on that end. Um, but I'm very happy to finally get this miner out of my garage, out of the box, and be able to get this thing plugged in so I can start hashing and contributing to the hash. Super rare opportunity. And this is where Jose sometimes pinches himself and, you know, basically like, how do I get here, right? And, and the reason the, the 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 reason I get here, even though I shouldn't answer for myself, but other people have answered this for me is, is because I'm a hell of a dude, man. I'm here to help y'all out. I'm here to help anybody out that basically needs to help. And if it's in a value for value way where I can share my skill and you can share your skill with me, I'm all for it. Keep that in mind, y'all, as you listen to the show. A lot of these podcasts that you, podcasters that you listen to are basically like in this remote, you know, glass box of themselves uh, or of their shit. You can't reach out to them. You can't talk to them. You can't be humble with them. You can't ask them for help. And I strive to be the complete opposite. I want you guys to reach out to me if you need help, if you have any questions. I happen to be very fortunate to be able to understand a lot of things and be in the room with the right people to learn a lot of things. And I just want to be a conduit of information, y'all. That's what this show is really all about, is to be able to get y'all the information that I am very fortunate to have. So remember, as you're listening to Talking in Bits, you can always reach out to me at Deathbed on Twitter or at Talking in Bits. You can reach out to either one of those because I run both of those. This is a one-man band. Um, and I will reach back out and do my very best to help y'all. And because of that, I've been very fortunate to meet great people like this Pleb, which I won't dox. Uh, Pleb is actually an understatement, by the way. This is a fantastic guy. And and sometimes when we say Pleb, we think about the guys that are going to sell their chairs and be broke. No, no, no. This is just a really good grade A guy. That's the better way uh, descriptive. But I don't think he wants to be doxxed, and I appreciate his value. But everybody, everybody that I've encountered, especially since I've been out here and in my time in Bitcoin, has been very helpful. Uh, and, and I'm thankfully in the good gracious of enough people to be able to pick up a phone and be able to ask a question or be able to extend my value. And that's really what life is all about. And that's what, which I'm going to talk about at the end of this segment, uh, what value for value is all about. So I'll keep you in touch. I'll keep you in tune or up to date with what I do with uh, this person's minor and what I learned and how that situation ends up. Speaking about miners, speaking about hashing, there was this article that went out that was basically saying that, you know, all time high mining, right? All time high hash rate that happened about a week or two ago. Uh, but a lot of that stuff is focused inside of the US. A lot of that hashing power is focused inside the US. And no surprise, you know, we're, we're basically the leaders of the world when it comes to being able to like, you know, be capitalists, basically be able to get money and be able to start businesses and be able to do all this stuff and gather resources, uh, especially more than the other parts of the world that are um, less fortunate. That's an easy way to say it. There's actually a, a, a more proper term to say that. But, you know, it's no surprise to me, but what really we should all keep in mind here is, is definitely get our hash on, right? We want to decentralize this network uh, in two regards. We want to decentralize this network when it comes to the big companies, So that's where like me hashing at home, you hashing at home and others hashing at home becomes a really big deal because then we can kind of steal, not steal, but take away some of this hashing power away from the major like U.S. conglomerates and U.S. companies that are doing it. That's one part. But we also want to decentralize hashing period away from the United States. Um, and, and this was an argument that was brought up a few years ago with China, where it was basically like all the all the hashing powers there. They could take over the network. They could 51 percent attack. Well, let's not be biased, y'all. That can actually happen. Technically, I still think it's a long shot here in the United States as well. And it's something that we need to be able to keep an eye on and um, something that we need to help other places overseas. Right. And this is where education comes in, but also in resources um, to be able to decentralize this hash, whether it's underground miners, whether it's public public miners in other places. I heard in South America, there's a lot of mining going on. I heard of certain places where they're using um, used up cooking oil. That's the only thing that stuff is useful for, by the way, um, to mine. Like, go, 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 go. We need to be able to keep this decentralized, even from the United States. Like I said, on two levels, we don't want these big companies 
uh, taking all the hashing power because although they may have all the finance, that means that they say kind of how things go and regulators are going to go after they ass, right? So we want to decent, we want to get these miners at home, build a bunch of project. Econo Alchemist is a great person to follow. Um, there's so many out there. Barn Miner, there's a bunch of people to follow. Um, you know, the, the Tarantula, there's, a, there's so many pleb miners that will basically be able to help you um, do this so we can help that ne- the network in that regards when it comes to decentralizing the hash. But once again, we also have to root and champion when we hear these projects happening overseas and out of the United States because we want to make sure that these this hashing power um, it'll probably never be equal around the globe, but it's decentralized around the globe so that therefore we can actually make sure that there's no speculative attacks or any type of other attacks that happen in one regard and we could get the fuck away from the legislators. So I found that article to be actually interesting. I'll tag it in the show notes for sure. Um, I don't know what the exact numbers are, but it's no surprise to me that after the China um, downfall or banning of hashing and with all the, you know, especially here in Texas, all the mining companies and all that stuff that's coming up and all the resources and renewable energies that we have here that, you know, we wouldn't be taking over that hashing power. So let's keep an eye on that, y'all. It's very important that that hashing gets decentralized. You would think that one person can't really do much, but start start figuring out how to how to mine from home. Not only is it beneficial for you, you can stream non-KYC sats, uh, DCA through your electric bill, but, you know, small equals big. And if we all do this together, then we'll kind of battle those giants for that spot uh, for the dehashing, uh, you know, and help if possible legislation were to come down because now legisla- leg- uh, businesses are a big target for legislation, uh, but decentralized, as we know from gun- from guns and, and R2A, decentralized um, c- uh, civilization or spread out is a much harder target for legislation and be able to lock these rules down. So keep that stuff in mind. Um, Colorado, speaking of legislation, and that's an easy segue in, Colorado is the first uh, state to accept Bitcoin as payment for taxes. I think so. I thought I heard this before, but I just read it. It just came through. Uh, I think it was a Bitcoin Magazine article. I'll link it in the show notes. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> I like. I wrote the topic down here and I noted it and I was like, yeah, I want to talk about this because I was going to go on this little binge and little tangent about like, this is great. This is adoption, y'all. We're getting there, y'all. We're winning the fight, man. And all this other shit. But I don't give them your Bitcoin, right? Especially when it comes to something as fiat as taxes. It's already a damn shame that we have to pay taxes. Taxation is theft, as all of you know. But now we're going to give them our Bitcoin, our you know little piece of the 21 million to be able to pay something as fiat as taxes. Don't get fooled, y'all. Don't get played into this damn game. Like, go buy meat with Bitcoin, right? <laughs> like, go buy, like, you know, support small businesses with Bitcoin. That makes a thousand percent sense to me. There's nothing wrong with that at all for me. But like to give your Bitcoin for something as fiat as taxes seems super backwards to me. Uh, I'm not always the truth. A good example of that is I thought the same way about IRAs and I still kind of do, but I had Phil on and go check out that episode with Phil because Phil explains that like, yeah, you're thinking closed minded, man. Like you're not, this isn't for you, but it doesn't mean it's not viable for other people. I don't know. Maybe there's advantages for taxes that I don't understand. But to me, it's like, man, if you're going to tax me dirty money here, take dirty money. Like, you're not going to get this fucking shit here. But brought it up anyways. Y'all do as you wish with y'all Bitcoin. That's actually the point of this free market network is that y'all can spend it on taxes if you want. But if you're paying attention, maybe you should just spend that on some sound food. Sound money for sound food sounds like a fair exchange. Sound money for theft Sounds like you're getting robbed even more and you're getting tricked into doing it because a lot of these charlatans are using the keyword of Bitcoin. And when you hear the word Bitcoin, you automatically think, oh, they're based or, oh, they're down with it. Nah, they just try and find clever ways to take it from you. And then, you know, legislation is going to be all over that fucking bullshit. And one thing that I find fascinating about Bitcoiners is, right, is that legislation, Bitcoiners continue to build parallel to legislation and not giving a fuck. So just this week alone, there was updates to like LMD, um, LDK, a few of the wallets out there. Uh, Fetty Mint finally released their um, actual public uh, iteration of Fetty Mint. Like 
Bitcoin is a continuing to build and not giving a flying fuck about legislation. But on the other side of that, you see legislation just like trying to keep up and huffing and old just like they are. Right. Just trying to keep up with this technology and then trying to put rules from the back like, oh, oh, please stop running so fast, y'all. Here's a rule to slow you down. Fuck them. Fuck them. Bitcoiners will continue to build. Bitcoin will continue to be Bitcoin. And Bitcoin doesn't give a shit about these dumbass legislators and what the fuck they got going on and all their shitty moves that they're about to pull and have tried to pull to basically depart you from your Bitcoin. That's all this shit is, man. So I urge if you can support developers, if you are a developer, let's move over to Bitcoin and let's get your your proof of work over here because we need all the troops that we can get. And if you're guys like me that don't code, well, donate to OpenSats, which I do in every single episode. Every time you guys donate here, you're actually helping the developers and helping Bitcoin because that's a piece. Or go directly to their website and you don't have to listen to Talking a Bits and you can do that as well, right? Support the developers that are building alongside of this fuckery and this buffoonery. I brought buffoonery back, y'all. Um, continue to support those because those are the ones that basically are not giving a fuck and eventually those are the ones that are going to provide us with the weapons the spears the swords the machine guns whatever analogy you want to use here to be able to continue to say fuck you you guys catch up or even better you guys disappear so I hear a lot of stuff White House releases this framework yeah fuck that keep building y'all because they can't do shit about shit to quote Eric Kaysen we have the fucking technology now and this is actually paraphrasing, Kaysen. We have the technology now where they fucked up. They basically gave it to us and now they can't do anything. So don't pay your fucking taxes in Bitcoin and don't do none of that shit in Bitcoin because you're giving the weapon back. You're giving the power in their hands. You're giving the a piece of the supply cap back to those motherfuckers that stole from you, stole from your parents, and stole from everybody since 1971 and maybe even before then. Fuck that. Keep minding, y'all. Keep doing what y'all doing, y'all, and keep earning your weight in Bitcoin. So how I said, not your weight in gold, your weight in Bitcoin. Speaking of that, and for the last section here of Solo Rip 22, I want to talk about earning your value, earning your keep. So for the past six months, I've done nothing but mine, right, and provide value, right? So value for value podcasting, value for value recording at at events, and, and value for value editing, value for value consultation, Value for value, everything, and mining at the same time. And boy, does that feel great for many reasons. First of all, I don't need an exchange for anything now, right? So I'm not leaving my trail there. Uh, Go back to the Econo episode uh, where we talk about why KYC is just a bad idea and why that's going to follow you around somewhere down the future and bite you in the ass, right? So it's good for that end, but it's also good on another end. It feels good to be able to help. It feels good to be able to let the person that you are providing value to define what that value means to them. That is extremely important and is so anti-fiat that I love it to death because now I can walk into a room and when somebody reaches out and says, well, what do I got to pay you for these services? I now know that it's up to me to let them decide what value that they received from their service, from this service that I've provided. You know, in the fiat land, you provide contracts, you provide price structures, you do funnels. I, the f- word funnel is just, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just super fiat, but you provide funnels and upsells and you do these different little uh, maneuvers and these tricks and these little charlatan moves to basically get this money and get that. And then if you don't do that, they label you an anti-capitalist and all this other shit. Fuck that. And the Bitcoin standard of things, I literally walk into a room, I shake somebody's hand, I show them with my proof of work what it is that I can offer and what it is that they get at the end. And then I let them, I put the ball in their court. And I let them decide what it is that the value is that they receive. And the, the beautiful part about that is, and, and Adam Carey talked about this uh, when I saw him speak, um, is, is that something magical happens when you let the other party decide what value it is to g- you have given to them. They actually provide you more value than it would if you limited your ceiling. Of course, there's the opportunity where they can shortchange it and be cheap, but that says more about them than it does about you, Right. You just keep on trucking at that point and you just let life and whatever happens take care of them, right? 
But for the most part, if you just leave it up to that person and you truly exchange value for value without fiat being the middle incentive there, boy, are people fantastic, man. Boy, do they take care of you. Boy, do they return the favor. And it doesn't have to be in Bitcoin necessarily. It could just be a return favor with their skill set. That's the way, y'all. And that's what I've been able to find out doing this value for value podcast, value for value freelance work, value for value consultation, and with mining. Uh, mining is not really value for value, but it kind of is because I'm providing my hashing to the network to secure the network and I'm receiving value in return, determined by the network. So earn your value, find your place, find your keep, find what it is that you can contribute and you're going to feel excellent. That's the, it's like a therapy for the soul. Right When you actually help somebody and fiat is not the incentive. And I really, really, really want to push this uh, point here, which is value for value is the way of the future. It was the way of the past. You bartered your cow for that person's milk. That's a bad example because sometimes you know what I mean. <laughs> you bartered your good for their good, their wool for your shoes, right, or your leather. You know, the, your blacksmith skills for for their you know anything for their uh, uh, herbology skills. If you want to go back deep that far enough, so I have found that that is the comeback, and that is what Bitcoin has brought back the value for value. If I can help y'all in any way, then I know y'all gonna help me, and it's always a good thing for the soul, and the value comes, y'all. So keep that in mind as you're trying to figure out how to contribute to this network and how to comp- continue to contribute to this community and keep that in mind um, going into the future when you go into your deals and when you go into your, um, you know, your contract situations or whatever. Shake the fucking person's hand. Let them know what it is that you can offer it. Most importantly, prove your work. Show that you can do what it is that you claim you can do and then let the you know let the world let the vibes let whatever you want to call it take care of the very rest and this is why this works this is why y'all support the show this is why y'all stream in because i'm not asking y'all for nothing i'm just giving it to you as it is and y'all appreciate that and i don't have to ask for it y'all just give it and i love y'all for that and i love everybody that works in that fashion and i'm eager to help and work with people that think that way if you don't think that way get there it's a beautiful fucking All right, guys, I've ranted out long enough here for solo rip number 22. As always, I appreciate y'all. Love y'all. Peace, prosperity, all the good things that can come your way. I hope that they go your way. And I'm going to send my love and my vibe to y'all always. Please reach out to me if y'all have any questions or if you just want to talk some shit or whatever it is that y'all want to do. I'm always here for y'all because this show wouldn't exist without y'all. Podcasting 2.0 is the place that you can find us. You can check us out. Fountain, Breeze, those are the two easy onboarding ones, but there's a gazillion of them out there. uh, Podcastindex.com backslash apps. And you could go check us out there. Um, If you're not on the Bitcoin standard of things and you're still on the legacy outlets, that's also okay. Not really, but I'm I'm, I'm all with you as long as y'all are listening to it. Uh, just do the algorithm thingy, which is like rate, share, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend, and that helps the algorithm float up. That helps more subscribers come on board. Shout out to Nate, by the way, um, uh, from Voltage. He actually posted this morning that Talking in Bits is an underrated show. I appreciate that love, good sir, uh, and a lot of many other people that I can't continue to thank enough for the support for this show going on. Uh, but shout out to y'all. I'll catch y'all next week. Later. <laughs>